hey everybody and welcome to my video looking at how to use a grid based around the golden ratio for composing images. This is an extremely advanced and difficult grid to use. In fact, it took me a very long time to find images that I had taken that used this framing style. So here is the golden ratio grid in general, and you can kind of see how a golden ratio spiral can come out of this grid shape, spiraling outward like this. And what that means is that you want to have areas of image interest that follow that direction. So let's take a look at our first image. Oh, well, this is strange. It uh, clearly does not have anything over here. So if you reverse the, uh, the grid, now you can see that there is a big central point of interest right in here. As we move outward, the shape of the tree roughly follows a spiral shape like this. And then, of course, the background here follows follows an arch upward and there is a general circular sense about this. Now part of that's because this image was taken with a fisheye and that fisheye lens warped some of the perspective. You can see over here where it really warped the horizon. This is actually a level horizon in this part of the image in reality. But one of the ways the golden ratio grid that I developed here helps to inform image composition is where are we going to put the center of visual interest? And in this image, it follows that because there is the most visual interest right in this area with additional visual interest in these other grid areas. And then this large, the largest open space has some visual interest, but not as much as the rest of the framing area. And it helps to, to guide composition a little bit as well. So next one we're going to take a look at is not the best picture I've ever taken. Kind of disappointed by it in a lot of ways, actually. But it does follow a golden ratio layout acceptably well. You can see up here we have the vast majority of the visual interest, and it moves outward, and there is a general motion about the shape of the visual interest. Over here we have this vertical line which perfectly lines up with the edge of this building right here. And then some of the other image elements line up pretty nicely with the rest of the grid. I've never liked this picture because the center of it is blurry while the rest of it is in complete sharp relief and that has always been incredibly disappointing to me. Otherwise it's a fairly good image. But um, you can see how the layout and the composition roughly follows a golden ratio sort of uh, grid layout. This last one here, it's a bit soft, but um, how, how on earth does this even come close to following a golden ratio layout? And we have the vast majority of the visual interest is in, is in this area right here. There's, there's very little visual interest in the image over here. Uh, what we have is growing visual interest as you move away from this smallest grid area of of the uh, of of this grid, and a lot of the visual interest ends up being balanced among different junctions with within the golden ratio grid. So this is a type of image framing which works very well for nature. It also works well for scenic portraits, though I have admittedly not ever taken one that follows this rule, at least none that I could find. And it is a very complex and difficult type of framing to pull off and pull off well. If you really want to go gonzo, you can in fact overlap framing grids. Oh my gosh, look at all this, look at all these grids. I wouldn't actually do that. Um, at any rate, 
the golden ratio grid, this is part of my video series that looks at different traditional and non-traditional framing methods, rule of thirds with some quadrant detail, diagonals, triangular composition, quadrants with rule of thirds composition as well. And so uh, there is a, a link below to a, an A4 or US letter PDF file, either or, that you are welcome to download and use for free to help set up and design images before you take them or use to help evaluate how your images fit into different types of grid layouts. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you have any, any questions or comments about this video or framing in general, please let me know. I'm more than happy to, uh, to help answer questions. If you have suggestions for other types of framing, or if you'd like to see more videos about image composition, please let me know and I'm more than happy to make those for you. One last thing before we go. Thank you guys for watching and take great photos.